person that I would recommend. Well, well that's the person that I'll support. Now, yeah. you know, you guys can support whoever you want, but I'm going to go with what uh, that council person um, asked um, to, you know, be his replacement. That's who I'm going to vote for. Now, you guys can vote for whoever you want, but I do want to make the motion that we um, send a resolution to Mike Brown to allow us to consider, or for him to reconsider um, his decision and allow us to vote on a person for the eighth ward, whoever it may be, whoever you guys might like, but my personal choice would be the person that he recommended. So if you want me to amend the motion just to say, to allow us to vote for somebody in the eighth ward, I'll do that. But my personal choice would be the person that Sergeant recommended, which is Reginald Flynn. Okay, I got Councilwoman Poplar and then Councilwoman Cruz. Thank you, Mr. President. I will support a resolution that states that we can ask for a person, vote on a person for the eighth ward. That's what I just said. I said that for my personal but choice. But no, you, you put in a name. I said my personal choice. I said you guys. Well, when we get ready to vote, okay. you can do your personal thing. Okay, okay, but I, I made my motion. But the and I said, And I said uh, we can vote on somebody in the eighth ward, but I said my personal choice would be Reginald Flynn. I, I changed the motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jackie, are you through? What will, the resolu what, what will the new resolution sound like, Mr. President? Well, my understanding is, and correct me if I'm wrong, because once we, once we type this up in the morning, we've got to send it down to the attorney for his approval and then send it down to the emergency okay. manager. The resolution is going to state that the Flint City Council wishes that Mike Brown would reconsider his position on, a, on allowing the City Council to fill the 8th Ward Council seat, period. That's it. That's it. And I said in my, my personal choice would be and the beyond person. beyond that, yeah. now, now, now my position is, that typically when we do these, we advertise, we um, allow people to submit uh, letters of interest. And that's fine. And, and then we normally go through um, a vetting process where council members can select two or three or four people that they want to interview, and then we make that choice. So, and, that, and that's I mean, fine, that's fine. But that's I'm fine just, with me. I'm just saying I'm, I'm who just, I, I'm just saying who my personal choice would be if that, if that comes to be. I understand. Mr. I'm just saying that, you know, protocol is that okay. there's always been a process in place. All right. All right. Mr. President. So, so the, the resolution is what I said. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. It's been moved and supported. Anybody else? Councilman Neely? No, I, I think the question should be, you know, do we all believe that the 8th Ward and residents of the 8th Ward should be represented? And I think everybody made it clear that we believe that to be true. And I think that's the motion that is on the floor, and I'm right. ready to vote on that. And then I'll have a comment after. Okay. Roll, Madam Clerk. Hey, I got just, Wait, for, just, just for clarity in my brain, because apparently I'm having trouble tonight understanding just about anything that's going on here. Um, are we voting to make that recommendation, or are we voting, which I thought I heard, to instruct the clerk? We're voting on a resolution. We're voting on a resolution, not to instruct the clerk to do anything, to bring a resolution for our next meeting tonight. We're voting on an actual resolution tonight. Right, and the, and the reason I say that is, is when we were in court before. No, fully understand that portion right. of it. Yeah, so we're I voting just, on a resolution. Not to direct the clerk to draft a resolution, but now, okay. We're voting on a resolution. Time is ticking. I told you, I'm having trouble tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what matter time? If I could play the devil's advocate with you all for a second. A resolution, if we draft a resolution tomorrow, will take some time to go through the attorney's office, with all due respect to the attorney's office, okay? Whereas a letter of some kind, signed by all members of council, would not have to go through the attorney's office. In, in other words, you, you're taking up a lot of time by doing a resolution. Well, but a resolution is official action by the city council, and I think that's what members want to see. And I think that's what we want to demonstrate to the public, that in our elected positions, we are taking an official action, not just submitting a letter of request. Am I correct, Councilman Nolan? Absolutely. I think both, both can suffice um, as official actions by a body, um, a governmental body. This is a request to the emergency manager who has the power who's consumed all power of his body to, and his 
uh, is given a resolution directing um, this body not to go forth to select a represent representative for the eighth ward. The, the emergency manager is governed by, and he's using uh, Public Act 436 to make his decision, but we still have a duty and obligation to honor the city charter, which has not been revoked, in 2-410, it clearly states, it says, if a vacancy occurs in less than 12 months, we shall replace in 30 days. It's, it doesn't, it says, you know, we shall do it. It doesn't talk about if it's one week or 12 months, it says we shall, shall do so. And so I think what, we, what Nolan has demonstrated in his motion is that the will to have somebody represent the, that person, the, the rep people in the eighth ward, uh, and I think we've all said that we believe that they deserve that. And I don't want to belabor this or, or prolong it. I want to go ahead and get, go forth with the vote, and then we can go on uh, and have that dialogue and that debate, who should sit in that seat. And then, um, and, and, and my view is it's probably going to be stalled out until November anyway. Right. But, but because of that debate, and that, uh, because this body won't be able to come together uh, on that, but at least allow us to come together on saying uniformly that we believe that the residents of the 8th Ward deserves representation on this council. Any further discussion? Roll, Madam Clerk. Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Ms. Kroon? Yes, and thank you for explaining it to me where I can understand. Ms. Poplar? Yes. Mr. Nolden? Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Councilman Neely? Yes, I, I'm not going to belabor it and continue to talk about what's going to be debated um, in this chamber for some time. And I, and, I, and, and I hope the level of hypocrisy doesn't come to play as we try to get a, rep a representative for the residents of the 8th Ward. But I do want to talk about a very, very serious issue, a systemic problem in our community. And I'm just going to lay out a small story about what has happened in the last two years as it relates to some recent crime that we, we've seen. A couple years ago, a 16-year-old young man broke into an elderly woman's home. And she was maybe 89 or 90 years old. Fortunately, the police did arrive upon finding that uh, this person was in distress. The 16-year-old boy then vacated the residence and police pursued. The 16-year-old young man shot at the police several times. The police returned fire, hitting and striking the young man at the age of 16. The person was incarcerated in juvenile detention for probably less than about 12 months. Recently, that person, well, moving fast forward, that person now is 18 years old. That person now is in jail as a person of interest and is, is uh, going through an investigation for the last four murders out of those uh, last few weeks. One of those murders was a, a nine-year-old young boy and a person at the grocery store. But we have to really challenge the system as a community that the, when a person shoots at a police officer after breaking into an elderly person's house and they only have to spend less or a year in jail. We really have to challenge the system when they release those type of individuals back into the population. If they shoot at a police officer, trust me, they don't care about you and I. And that, that allegedly or could possibly be proven here in the near future if that person is tried and convicted for the last four murders of innocent people inside the city of Flint. So we have a systemic problem here. It's just not about putting a person in the eighth ward seat or having debate or dialogues about these ordinances. And these things are all important. But we have to do something in our community and speak to these injustices. When a person can fire up on a police officer with the intent, I don't think they were trying to just scare the police officer. I think it was with the intent, probably to harm the police officer. They broke into the person's home with the intent to steal or do more. And if our system can only put them in or incarcerate them or take them out of circulation for less than a year, we have a real problem. 
And so as we talk and go forth, and, and I think the last meeting I asked the emergency manager and the police officials to come forth and deliver a public safety plan to the community. They had a press conference, which they locked. Uh, Vice President, Councilman Nolan, am I correct? They did not allow you to participate in the press conference? No, when I came, I wasn't involved in that. So, so it was closed door, and they didn't allow a representative, elected representative, uh, uh, and also a elected leader of this body to even participate. The police chief did not have much to say in that dialogue as they addressed it. It was the emergency manager. They did not put forth a plan to the community. They said, crime is better, and we'll get back to you. I've, I received several phone calls over the past few days about breaking and entering in my area. Violent crime, burglaries, robberies, and homicide continues to grow in our community. We need to have a public safety plan, and we need to have them before us, and they need to present the plan so we can figure out where we fit in as a community, clergy, residents, elected officials, everybody to make sure these heinous crimes cannot continue. So I encourage every one of you, because just like us, uh, you have a voice as well. Please do not rely upon us in total to take your message forward when we get locked out of the room by this emergency manager who does not live in this community. So I encourage you to put a call in to Andy Dillon's office and Governor Snyder's office to tell them and demand that we be addressed with a public safety plan and just not is getting better and we'll tell you later. That's it, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman Newland. Anyone else? Our council meeting is adjourned.